Mo. And it is time for another plan with me. I'm starting a new bullet journal for the month of November and I'm very excited as always. I have been using for the last few bullet journals the Cognitive Surplus journals. I really, really love them. This one was from October 2020 to April 2021, and I actually just totally finished this book. These Cognitive Surplus journals last me about six months, and I always use them up entirely when I've kind of run out of pages at the end. So I stopped this bullet journal with the last month of April. I finished that month, and then I had quite a bit more left that I needed to use up. So I used it for just notes and things. I used this one particularly for notes on readathons. So all the readathons basically from the last six months are listed back here with book ideas. I put some video ideas back here. The bullet journal that I use next is almost entirely done. I'm filming this at the end of October. So there was Marty. So this one is going to run from May 2021 to October 2021. And I have some spaces in this one that I haven't used yet. In this one I tried out the idea of making a free little library chart or tracker and it didn't really work for me so I have a couple of pages here and then I also had the intention of making a booktube tracker and that would be like booktubers that I really love, like what their channels are kind of about, and what their actual names are, not just the name of their channel. I think that's still kind of a good idea because it's a good quick reference when I'm making videos or booktubers that I don't personally know but I like their work. But I never did do that so I probably won't end up doing that and I'll probably use these few pages for something else, you know, maybe readathon trackers or whatever. And then I also am going to end up having quite a few pages at the end of this one, maybe like 10 pages at the end of this one, not enough to get another full month in. I am going to use those for my blog trackers. So in my blog, I make a lot of drafts of things that I want to come back later and write full blogs on, but then I kind of forget what they are or I forget that I made them or I don't feel like going back through the whole list. So I've done this before in a, in a bullet journal where I've listed every single blog draft that I have, how far I've gotten on working on that, if it's just an idea or if I've taken the photos for it, and then I can cross them off as I go along. I started that list here and then I never finished it, so I'm going to use the last 10 or 15 pages of this bullet journal and I'm going to make that and then I'll only use it in this bullet journal. I won't reproduce it in the next bullet journal that I make. I think one of the things that I love about bullet journaling is that it's always changing. You never have to keep something that's not working for you. You never have to use something if you don't want to. You can always find a use for leftover pages. So that is a great, super customizable way of journaling and way of tracking your schedule and everything else. So love it. On to our new bullet journal. I needed a new bullet journal for November 2021 and I'm sure it'll last me as the last two have for the next six months. Of course I went with Cognitive Surplus again. I think they're a really great company. They're small, they're low waste, they're recycled materials, and I think their journals are just stunning. They have a lot of different types of journals. They have larger journals, they have floppy journals, they have smaller journals, they have kind of field notebooks, they have hard covers, they have soft covers, they have dot grid, they have line, they have blank. So any kind of journaler that you are, Cognitive Surplus definitely has a journal for you. This is not sponsored, but Cognitive Surplus, if you want to sponsor me ever, I would be totally down to work with you. I think you're a great company. The first of their journals that I got was this, which has the Southern and Northern Hemisphere. It's really beautiful. Um, I think they do wear um, a little bit, especially the darker journals wear a little bit on the edges. I'm really rough on my journals, so I don't mind that. Could just be a me problem. The next journal that I got was the Mineral Kingdom, and it has all these amazing gems on it. I went with a lighter journal. As you can see, there's still um, some wear on the edges, and this one definitely got like coffee stains on it and got a little bit dirtier because of the way that I wear a journal. And then I ordered a new 
journal from Cognitive Surplus, so I thought we could open that today. As usual, I don't remember what I ordered. How can you remember? It was like three months ago. I always order my journals a little in advance of when I need them, but I have to say that Cognitive Surplus delivers so fast. I really enjoy that they use paper packaging. Uh, uh, it's, this is like a, a cardboard mailer that you could recycle and the books are in cardboard so they're well protected. They're not going to get banged up but you can also recycle that cardboard which is great. Of course I can't get the tape off. One exciting thing about my ordering this time was I also ordered another journal. I ordered a planner from them, which I've never done before, but I'm contemplating the idea of using the planner to plan all my booktube stuff and then using my bullet journal without the booktube stuff. Because I find that the booktube spreads that I make are based on my blog spreads and I run out of room really easily in them. I end up changing things around. I end up writing out every video that I think I'm going to do, but then not using it, so I run out of space by the time I'm really doing it. I have a section for notes for like the next month and stuff. It's not really the best method. For instance, right now, I'm at the end of October and I'm totally ready to start planning November's content, but I haven't made my November journal yet, so I don't have any place to put that. So I was thinking that if I got a year's planner, then I could use that. Here it is. This is the, okay, I spilled the planner. What bullet journal did I get? Here it is. Oh my gosh. Wow. It's super beautiful. I don't remember ordering this at all. How wonderful for me. I always get the dot grid, so this is a dot grid, and this one is physical geography, and it's the oceans. It's ocean, planet, physical geography. This is a sticker, so it'll come off. Oh yeah, and everything has numbers. It has a listing of everything that's mentioned here. So it's the ocean and the sky, There's the different clouds are listed. It's very faint, so it is a little bit hard to see all the illustrations on this one, whereas these two are obviously a high contrast and very bold. This one is not that way, but I really love it. It's gorgeous. I'm going to take you with me as I do my six month layout and I start my November layout. Then here's the planner. Let's see what this one is. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. Now, that's definitely my fault for not reading the um, dimensions probably correctly. I did look at like 500 journals or something. Like, I looked at a lot of journals and a lot of planners. So this one is quite small. It's called Planetary System. It's called Star Map. Hmm, interesting. So it has a section for schedule, like maybe if you have classes or your work schedule. There's a couple pages of that. And then there's a month. And I loved this because one, the month was given a full two page spread, which I really enjoy for a calendar that's big like this. And then also I liked it because it didn't have any dates. So you can use this all year round or you can use it you know, however you want. You can do two months, like if you wanted to make two months, January 2022, and do one month for your booktube and one month for your blog, that's a possibility too. And then it has the days of the week. This does have, I would say, a complaint in that the Saturday and Sunday are divided, where each weekday is given a full third of the page, but Saturday and Sunday, much less space. Now, if you're a student, that might make sense because you're planning and scheduling your homework and your class schedule and things like that. But as someone who works through the weekends and weekends mean nothing, you know, it does mean that you have a lot less space on Saturday and Sunday, but there's some ways that you could get around that. And certainly I think because the calendar isn't dated, 
you could theoretically use some of the extra slots as extra days, if that makes sense. At the end, there's just a bunch of blank pages. Not even a bunch. There's like 10 blank dotted pages that I guess you could put extra information and stuff in. I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work for me for what I thought it was going to be. There's not a lot of room in this. Frankly, I thought this book was going to be bigger than this. Here's X-Force. I thought this book was going to be more of like a comic book size, like larger than the actual journal. Like there might have been books like that and I just mistakenly bought the smaller one because I like the cover. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think it would be interesting to try. I like how simple it is. I don't know if it's going to work for what I wanted it to, but what I'll do is I'll set up a month and if it seems like it'll work out for me, then I'll use it. And if it doesn't, then I won't. That's why bullet journaling is amazing. Hello. I like these two together too. Very dark, very moody, but the reoccurring kind of circular, semi-circular theme is really nice. So let's get going on filling out and creating my bullet journal spreads for a new bullet journal and for my monthly spread of November.